Good evening and welcome to another upload on my YouTube channel. Tonight I am uploading a short story which I wrote a short while ago and I would like to share this story with you. The title of this story is Nathaniel. And the story goes like this. My name is Edward Albert Mitchell. The year is the 1899. The date is the 29th of October. I have left my hometown of Huddersfield in West Yorkshire to start out a brand new life in another town. This town is Whitby, which is on the north east coast of the United Kingdom. I had gone in search of a new life, a newfound freedom to explore, to be who I wanted to be. And I had decided to make my living selling, finding and selling Whitby Jet. I mean, Jet, after all, is became very, very popular uh, as used in mourning attire by Queen Victoria after the sudden death of her husband, Prince Albert. That coupled with all the fossils that can be found between Whitby and Ravenscard along the coast. I decided there was money to be made, so I made my way out there. I was 28 years old at the time and thought it was time that I had a new challenge in life, so I set out. Catching the old steam train that thundered across the tracks, carrying me a hundred miles from my home to where I would begin my new life. I rented a property on Henrietta Street, which um, was known by the locals as Pier Cottage. The cottage was quite small, with very low ceilings. There was an old peat burning fire in the living room. And there were some windows which opened out onto a balcony. When you stood on that balcony, you were directly above Tate Hill Sands and a view directly through the Twin Piers. The cottage itself always seemed to be surrounded by a thick fog, smog type of thing, which was largely due to Fortune's smokehouse, which was just across the way where the fish were, were, were smoked overnight and sometimes in the gas lights outside the smoke coming from the chimney of Fortune's smokery appeared to be like ethereal spirits just dancing there in the, in the light. Quite a spooky atmosphere. But it was a place that I really wanted to be. This particular day I can remember that there was a really bad storm. The cloud was, clouds were rolling in, the sky was black, thunder was crashing and lightning was flashing into the sea. There were boats in the harbour below me which were being tossed around like corks and I gave a thought to the poor souls who were out beyond the harbour wall and how they must have been fighting a terrible fight against the, those terrible elements out there. The sea is such an unforgiving thing. Calm, like a duck pond at some points, and within minutes a seething cauldron of rage. 
there was a fierce wind howling over the harbour wall and it grew causing the sand on Tate Hill Beach to move in an undulating manner very similar to a serpentine in movement. It was a very wild night altogether. I was quite tired as I'd been out that morning and walked all the way to a place called Kettle Ness where I was in search of Whitby Jet and Jet as some of you will know is fossilised monkey puzzle tree Arucaria and it is much sought after by the jewellers. Walk back during the afternoon through Sands End and I walked along the beach as the tide was out. This was before the storm and I was so glad to be back and sat in the cottage because I wouldn't have wanted to be out there on a night such as this. I poured myself a glass of whisky. I took some thick twist tobacco from my tobacco pouch, a pocket knife and I cut the tobacco before packing it into my clay pipe. I took a taper from a jar and I put a taper into the fire, brought it out and I lit my pipe and when the tobacco was alight I drew deeply on it and breathed out, I breathed the smoke up towards the ceiling, <coughs> excuse me, and it was a, a lovely feeling of satisfaction. I sipped at the whisky and sat down in my armchair and I remember I was staring into the fire just watching the flames dance and seeing how they glowed in the brass of the fender which was round it. The weather outside was becoming much worse. It began to hail and I could hear a tap, tap, tap on the window which led out to the balcony. Tap, tap, tap. I was listening to it, staring into the fire, enjoying my pipe of tobacco and I must have fallen asleep. I was in so much peace and so much calm in the midst of all the chaos that was going on around me. I was awoken by what appeared to be a more insistent tap, tap, tap on the window. I thought it must have been the hail which had become stronger and was hitting the window now with more violence because of the storm. I looked up and through sleep filled eyes I could see what looked like the outline of a man. He was a very tall man, over six feet tall. He was dressed from head to foot in black. He had a cape around his shoulders and I noticed he had a pair of black shoes which appeared to have mud on them. He had shoulder length jet black hair and a very, very pale complexion. He was tapping at the window and I noticed as he tapped that his fingers were very long and thin and he had very sharp pointed fingernails. I was a little bit uneasy at the sight of him. I wondered who he could be but the tap became louder and louder more insistent and at one point I felt compelled that I had to walk towards the window which led out onto the balcony and as I walked to the window he stared directly into my eyes as though he was searching my soul. His eyes were strangely dark. No life in them. I have never seen such dead eyes. And I was trying to fight against going to the window 
but I had no option. As I arrived at the window he lifted a hand and he beckoned me towards him. And it was at that point that I felt compelled to open the latch and open the windows and invite this person in. He walked through, well I say walked, he appeared to glide more than walk and he was stood then by my fireplace. He looked at me again with those dark eyes and he said, I am Nathaniel and I have lived here in Whitby for what seems like centuries now. I often spent time on the night wandering round the streets looking for people who will allow me into their homes and you have been kind enough to let me share your warmth and for that I would like to invite you to join me on a journey which will be a journey of a lifetime this journey will give you everything and in return it will cost you everything that you have I offered him a drink he said no I'm absolutely fine I never drink whiskey I asked him if he would like anything to eat to warm himself up he said he had already eaten and he went on to tell me of his life and how he had been to the opera houses of Milan the ballet theatres in Moscow the theatres of London how he had been all over the world and he had done for centuries he claimed to be 485 years old which I thought was just impossible and silly talk but as he spoke his story really got into my soul this man who was stood before me had done more than most people would do in ten lifetimes he had been everywhere he had seen everything He sat down opposite me in the other armchair and I said, I will enter this journey with you. Please tell me what I must do. At this point Nathaniel was looking round the room and I thought that he perhaps had not heard what I said. So again I said, I am ready to go on this journey with you. And then as if from nowhere, he was there, stood right at my side. Those cold, dark, dead eyes looking at me again. This time he was much closer. And I could sense the aroma of the grave was on him. He said, are you sure you want to go on this journey? I said yes I would love to go on this journey I want to be in the places you've been I wish to see the things you've seen and with this he leaned forward now his cheek was on my cheek and he was sniffing at my skin I pulled away a little a bit, a bit horrified by what was going on again there was no life in those eyes and his red lips parted and I could see two very sharp fangs protruding from his upper jaw. He stooped forward again and this time I felt those two fangs sink deep within the vein in my neck. I remember I could hear him drinking I could hear him sighing with satisfaction. 
I could hear him breathing so deeply. It was at that point that I uh, passed into blackness. I awoke the very next night. Nathaniel was no longer there. The storm which was raging outside the night before had made its way over the town and up over the North Yorkshire moors and away. The twin lighthouses on the piers flashing their warnings of the pedal of the rocks to any boatman who went out there. Within the harbour everything was calm again. Yet everything was so different. I remember opening the window and going out onto the balcony and staring up at the moon. And it was then that I realised that I had an incredible thirst. A thirst that would never leave me. And it has never left me to this day. And this thirst was for human blood. I made my way out of my home on Pier Cottage. I walked down Henrietta Street past the board in. I walked then onto the White Horse and Griffin pub and there in the passageway at the side of the pub I encountered my first victim. He was a helpless drunk but I pounced draining him and dispatching him to the jaws of death. Nathaniel had gone and to this day I have never seen him again. The only thing I have which is a reminder of him is that when I awoke he had left me with this ring. This is one of Nathaniel's rings and as such with me wearing it I am one of his children. He is my, he is my creator. And I have carried on this life ever since. Sneaking about in the shadows, hiding in doorways and alleyways awaiting my next victim. It's nothing personal. It's just that need, that desire that I have to feed to live. As I say, Nathaniel left that morning and in doing so he left behind another vampire. I am Nosferatu. Fear me. Thank you all once again for watching my YouTube uploads. I hope you've all enjoyed this short story. Take care of yourselves and if you're out there tonight, particularly any of you who may be out on the streets of Whitby, beware because I may be waiting just for you. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel as it helps a great deal. Click the bell icon and you will get all the latest updates, uploads. And thank you again as always. Namaste.